We'll get started. This is last but not least. And it's one of my favorite things to do, is to, <laughs> to recognize all the great, great things going on in SUNY. Um, so this is the Effective Practices Showcase. It originally was a panel, but unfortunately, those who submitted were unable to attend um, today. So you just get me. Um, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the program. And then they were all uh, able to submit to me some information about their effective practice. And if you didn't get to see it online to vote for it, I'll be sure to go over the overview of that for you so that you have some understanding of what they submitted and uh, what they wanted to share with you today. And I'll give you a little bit of their bios too so you have a sense of who these people are who submitted to this program, okay? So a little bit of background. Uh, the Open SUNY Effective Practice Award program was launched. Um, this is round four. Yeah, so it was launched four years ago in an effort to recognize those online best practices and strategies and innovative online teaching and learning activities that our exemplary Open SUNY fellows um, from across our SUNY system have put forward. This program collects those, they sh we share those, and we showcase those uh, throughout the year. These also align with the OSCAR rubric. Uh, we try to use effective practices that are submitted as examples of ways to enhance course design. So wherever applicable, the effective practices are um, added into the OSCAR rubric as examples. And I think that that's a really neat thing to be able to take um, what the community contributes and help build course quality um, in that way. So this year we've expanded the program a little bit to include recognition of efforts that support online student success. Um, you'll hear about things that help ensure course quality and expand access by removing barriers. All these things contribute to uh, a better online student experience. If you're not familiar with TOPER, um, Open SUNY partners each year with the University of Central Florida to recognize excellence in online and blended teaching practices across SUNY in the Joint Effective Practices Program. And this is through their online repository, Teaching Online Pedagogical Repository, or TOPPER. TOPPER is an open resource, and it's hosted by UCF. They review, select, and organize effective online practices for faculty, instructional designers, and others in uh, online teaching and learning. We encourage all of our entries to the Open SUNY Effective Practices Program to be submitted to TOPPER for consideration. And we have had several that have already been um, accepted in previous years. And you can check out that URL. And you can just search SUNY and it'll pull up all of the SUNY entries. So that, that's a lot of fun to take a look at what your colleagues have been recognized. This is a, an international um, platform actually. A unique feature of the Effective Practices Program is the crowdsourced peer voting that we conduct through a Facebook group. This allows our extensive community the opportunity to vote on their favorite entries. And those effective practices that earn the most votes or likes um, are recognized annually with an award at the Open SUNY Summit. To date, this group has 292 members from both across SUNY and outside of SUNY. So hopefully, uh, you have joined the group and cast your vote as well. We received five entries for round four. They're represented here. They represent a variety of practices spanning collaborative learning environments, uh, virtual reality learning environments, open educational resources, and online student support. So I'll read to you uh, a couple of these, or all of these, and you can just kind of get a sense and see if your campus or your peers are, are represented there. Rihanna Rogers uh, from Empire State College submitted her effective practice titled Engaging Students in International Virtual Exchange Opportunities. Eileen O'Connor, also from Empire State College, submitted her effective practice titled Virtual Reality Environments for Learning and for Community. Elizabeth Johnston from Monroe Community College submitted Using Excelsior's OWL and ORC in the ALP Classroom. A lot of abbreviations there, which I'll explain when I yes. talk to you about hers. Anju Yu from SUNY Canton, creatively engaged in writing for digital environments, and Molly Mott and her team from SUNY Canton on reducing student isolation through their development of a campus life model to help improve retention rates in, uh, of students in online degree programs. All right, so again, unfortunately they weren't able to be here, but they did contribute some um, information for me to be able to share with you.
So I'll start uh, with the first one on that list, which was Rihanna. <coughs> Rihanna Rogers is the coordinator of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary studies at Empire State College. She's also an associate professor at ESC in the Division of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Rihanna's effective practice is really a teaching model in which she works to create a dynamic learning environment that encourages debate, participatory learning, innovation, critical thinking, gameplay, and active questioning. She encourages such interactions by employing a variety of teaching methods, including formal and informal topic-driven topic debates, small group projects, student-led discussions, peer review assignments, participant observation exercises, interactive game-based assignments, a variety of OERs, and technology-driven mini-lectures. Rihanna continually poses questions that compel students to consider problems in new ways, and she solicits student comments throughout this process. She believes all students deserve respect, clear course and grading expectations, a safe environment to learn, and regular opportunities for interaction and engagement. About her teaching model, Rihanna says, quote, teaching to me is truly a collaborative process which can only be successful if it's built on a reciprocating, mutually respectful relationship. I believe all students should be given access to learning and education no matter what their situation in life, location in the world, and access to wealth. My approach to teaching an emphasis on OER, cross-cultural communication, and international virtual exchange opportunities has enhanced this learning process for students, end quote. In addition to sharing her research, Rihanna supplemented her entry with student survey reports and strategies for the successful development, modification, and use of OERs. So I'd encourage you to check out those links on her Facebook entry page. And forgive me for reading directly, but I don't want to mess up what they said. <laughs> I want to give it to you the way that they wanted it intended. Eileen O'Connor has been a full-time faculty member at Empire State College since 2004 in science education and in the Learning and Emerging Technologies Master Program. Eileen's effective practice showcases an immersive collaborative opportunity for her students where she creates an open source, accessible, affordable, personal classroom experience. Here she and her students share ideas, presentations, poster sessions, virtual tours, host guest speakers, and even build and develop uh, in a non-hierarchical, comfortable environment. Virtual reality has allowed Eileen to bridge the distance between her students and herself and provide a creative environment where her classes can meet and share experiences. In addition, she's met the ongoing challenge of making distance education as networked, collaborative, community building and engaging as possible um, and as, as best as the face-to-face -face environment. Her effective practice illustrates this combination of creating, repurposing and designing virtual spaces that serve as a creative and learning empowered environment for students. Eileen's entry is supplemented with her research. She includes startup guides and resources for creating and implementing virtual environments and sample student work. In a fellow chat that Eileen led for the Open SUNY Community Practice, she has said about virtual reality, quote, virtual reality can be anything that you can conceive, build, and invite others to join, given, of course, your knowledge, funding, persistence, and vision, end quote. And Eileen has a lot of persistence. She's been doing this for a while, um, and her students uh, have benefited greatly from um, the time and energy that she's put in it. So I would encourage you to visit some of Eileen's work and explore some of her students' virtual environments, which she also shared in the Facebook group. All right, Elizabeth Johnston is a widely published scholar and creative writer. She's a faculty member in the English and Philosophy Department at Monroe Community College, where she teaches writing, literature, and gender studies. Elizabeth is also a 2017 Open SUNY Online Teaching Ambassador. Just throw that in there. And she's also an OER advocate for the SUNY OER services. Elizabeth's effective practice entry details her adoption of Excelsior College's Online Writing Lab, OWL, and Online Reading Comprehension, ORC, as her primary text for her accelerated learning program courses. And by adopting these resources, Elizabeth has been able to meet a number of factors that threaten her particular student population's success and retention. The OWL ORC is an open educational resource which is free and immediately accessible to students who might otherwise be unable to afford a textbook. As an OER, it's flexible and can be tailored and adjusted to the specific needs of her students, which she does. It is multimodal and interactive, 
speaking to the ways in which 21st century learners interact with information. It provides the kind of just-in-time feedback at-risk students need as they work through the conceptual challenges. In her entry, Elizabeth outlines how she incorporates these resources into her classes and the impact that doing so has had on her students' success. Her student feedback and evaluations directly highlight this impact. I'd invite you to check out these documents as well as the OWL Educator Resources link that she provides in her entry. There are a lot of resources on how to get started with using this particular type of OER. Yeonju Yu is a professor in the English and Humanities Department at SUNY Canton. Her areas of research interests include applied linguistics, literacy, educational technology, assessment and pedagogy in multicultural and multilingual contexts. Yeonju's effective practice highlights an innovative composition pedagogy that's designed to prepare students for writing in multimodal environments by creatively integrating emerging computer technologies in a first year college composition course. Multiliteracies are a powerful skill set to maximize creativity of expression by allowing writers to mix, match, or replace text with audio, video, and other different modes. While the first year composition course at her institution is heavily weighted in conventional text-based expository writing, Yeonju has explored effective composition pedagogies that transform first year composition from heavily text-based to creatively multimodality enriched. Her engaging digital composition activity incorporates the use of apps to transform alphabetic writing into multidimensional digital artifacts, supporting the development of her students' writing skills in the different genres, creative thinking skills, and rhetorical knowledge, along with multiliteracies and creativity. Yeonju's entry highlights her strategy with a lesson outline and student outcomes. She also provides student work samples and publications of her findings. I would encourage you to explore these resources that she's provided in her Facebook entry. And our last submission is from Molly Mott. Molly is the Associate Provost and Dean of Academic Support Services and Instructional Technologies and has submitted this entry on behalf of a team of folks at Canton who have worked on this model collaboratively. Molly's effective practice is the development of a campus life model and was awarded an IITG grant in 2017. This model meets the needs of online students who are now looking for a fuller college experience beyond the usual links to campus resources and services typically provided to students at a distance. The campus life model uses engagement strategies mapped to the different dimensions of campus life, academic, social, and co-curricular, and showcase effective practices for building community for students who are limited by time and geography. Activities were based on the professional and social engagement preferences of fully online students and designed to be accessible and of value to the learner. Molly's entry is supported with specific examples of student engagement in each of those three dimensions of campus life. It's also accompanied by an outline of how her campus met and intended, uh, met their intended deliverables of the project, which are also supported by their student satisfaction results. I invite you to take a closer look at the research that Molly has shared in her entry around motivation and engagement to reduce isolation for online students. Okay, so all that being said, <laughs> now we'll confer the top award. So with five entries, we have a, a first place award to, uh, to give out and we'll read that to you and then we'll be sure that that uh, gets delivered. So the results of the peer voting were tallied last night uh, when, the, when the voting closed with the following results. With 57 votes, the first place 2018 Open SUNY Effective Practice Award goes to Creatively Engaged in Writing for Digital Environments. This is in the Innovative Instructional Practice for Online Teaching and Learning category and was submitted by Yeonju Yu from SUNY Canton. And I know Alex has the um, award just to show and we're gonna be sure to give this uh, to Yeonju. <laughs> All of those who um, submitted to this, this award program are also invited to participate in SUNY CIT. There is a panel there as well in May, and some of them will be present um, at that particular presentation. So if you are going to CIT, you'll actually get to hear from them instead of from me, <laughs> which is great.
We're going to Photoshop her right now. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Laura can do amazing things. <laughs> So um, there are some sites up here for more information on the Effective Practices Program or other ways to engage in the Open SUNY community if you are interested. Um, you can check out the online teaching hub there. And there's also a document there. It's a chart with online teaching, Open SUNY online teaching resources. So I just want to thank all who submitted and especially all those who voted. This is a, um, a, a crowdsourced, a, a peer-supported award. You all chose uh, the, the person who won, um, and I think that that's really fantastic. And I would encourage you to consider submitting for round five to be recognized for next year. So again, we can have a round of applause for Yunju. Thank you. I'll leave that up. Okay, well, it looks like we've been very efficient today, um, and um, I'm not sure how that happened, but um, it's cool. We get a little bit of time back. Um, I'm going to um, wrap us up uh, today with a preview of what's coming up for tomorrow, and some of you weren't here first thing this morning, um, so I wanted to make sure to mention that uh, the Chancellor will be joining us, Christina Johnson will be joining us at 9 a.m. tomorrow promptly. Uh, she is on a schedule, so I would encourage you all to, um, you know, be here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 9 a.m. Uh, if you're coming uh, to be able to hear um, her um, opening remarks and her address. It's, it's brief, but it's very, I feel like we are all, um, you know, excited to be able to have her here at at the summit and and uh, to have her join us and give some opening remarks. Um, so so uh, breakfast and registration start at eight, um, and um, we'll have the chancellor on at nine. Um, the day tomorrow we have a very exciting. Um, roster of uh, presentations uh, set up for tomorrow. Tanya Justin, um, who is the Director of E-Learning Research and Development from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, will be with us um, uh, first thing in the morning, and she will be talking about her date project, data project and um, turning findings into practice. And um, if you don't know Tanya um, and some of the work that she's done, you will be very interested to learn more about this project. And she She's looking for um, collaboration and and um, and has stuff to share. So I, I know that you will find it very interesting. Rob Steiner, who's actually here joining us today. Hi, Rob. Say hi. Um, Rob is the director of online teacher education at the American Museum of Natural History, which I think is within walking distance of here. Um, and I'm so excited. Rob and I have known each other for a long time, and, and I um, am so excited to have him come and share some of the online and blended science science education um, activities that uh, they have been doing at um, the American Museum of Natural History, and we're very much looking forward to, um, uh, to learning more tomorrow, Rob. Um, and as I mentioned this morning, um, unfortunately, John Seeley Brown is not able to be with us due to a medical emergency. Um, and uh, so we're very sorry and wish him speedy recovery. Um, uh, so I just wanted to make sure that if you weren't here this morning and didn't hear that um, announcement that you knew about that. Uh, the unsession will happen um, in the same slot that the keynote had been. So I'm just moving everything up an hour. And um, if you haven't, I, I would encourage you to go to go to the website and go to the bit.ly and put in um, you know your name and the thing that you want to share and if people don't sign up I will come and get you and bring you up to talk about something because I know you all are doing um, fun and interesting and cool stuff on your campuses and I want to make sure to um, to use this event on this platform for us to really share and network with each other about the fun really interesting cool stuff that we're doing on our campuses um, 
And it's super easy. You just put your name down, and we'll go in that order and put some links in, and you have three minutes. That's it. So, um, so it should be really easy to do. And then after the end session, Jesse Stommel, who is the executive director of the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies at the University of Mary Washington, and he's also the director of hybrid pedagogy and co-founder of the Digital Pedagogy Lab, will be here talking about open pedagogy, and I'm super excited um, to have all of our speakers here, and I'm particularly interested in open pedagogy, so I'm looking forward to this. And then last but not least, Amy Collier, formerly at Stanford and now at Middlebury. Uh, she is the Associate Provost for Digital Learning will be um, here with us talking about critical digital fluency. So we have rock stars tomorrow. And every year I say this, I don't know how we can top it the next year, and every year somehow or another, you know, the conference uh, wizard comes down and <laughs> makes miracles happen. So um, I'm so excited to have all of us um, engage and meet and talk with these um, amazing speakers and learn from them. And, um, and so I'm looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. We have a little bit of extra time tonight and a little bit of extra time tomorrow to enjoy the city. Um, dinner is on your own. I know that w groups are forming to, um, uh, to go out to dinner together. Um, most likely, several of us will be found in the bar afterwards um, at the hotel, and we can continue our conversations and networking there. Thank you very much for coming today. Thanks to all the presenters, all of the virtual participants, all of you, all of the ambassadors, and the Effective Practice Award winner. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow morning.